Okay, you guys. I have a bit of an octopus here. Now, as you can see, we have a regulator set. Now, this set has five essential components, as you will soon see. The first one is the valve. I'll show you how this works later. Right here is a plastic cap. Now, this cap can be unscrewed and disconnected, and we're about to do that. We're going to connect it to this right here. I'll show you how this works in a second, and I'll start to explain to you why not to do it while I show you how. And the reason is, if you're interested in diving, this is a pretty dangerous hobby, guys, and you do want to be careful. But I'm going to show you. There's a valve here. It's a flat with an indent. On the other side, there's an indent. This unscrews. It's best if you hold this in place. Pop the cap out. It comes aside. Okay? The valve is exposed. Now we take that, put it on. You can hear it. Hold that in place again, nice and tight, and that's good enough. You don't need to reef on it too hard, believe it or not, but you want it tight. Okay, so now we've got our pressure gauge, okay? Goes from zero to 5,000. This is the best one I have. This is a 3,000 PS tied tank, so you'll see that it won't get past that. We're going to open the tank, but not from here, okay? You're going to go down here. You're going to give it just a little crack, open it up, then go just a little higher and you'll see we're just under 3,000 PSI. And the reason is, I've actually uh, made two attempts at shooting this video so far, and it was awkward to show everything, and I had the camera in one hand, and it just didn't look right. So I'm hoping that this will be a lot better. So, um, this is now pressurized, and it's kind of awkward for me to show you, but hopefully you can see that it says 5,000, okay? So... Uh, it's now showing just under 3,000, which is nice. It's a nice uh, storage level, and it was full when I started the demonstration. Down here, I have another one. I have a couple of different tanks. I have a U.S. diver's tank as well. Uh, but before I get into any of that in future videos, I want to cover for you the basics here. So you have two breathing units. Two, because in an emergency... If another diver needed it, they could just come and grab off your chest and take the second one and breathe on it. That's a good emergency feature. So there are two. We're going to cover these real quick. Okay, goes in the mouth with the vents down. And you can see that it works excellently. You can feel that the valve is working and that it's solid. This is a good unit. Now we take the second one, test it, make sure it's giving air. If you press this while it's in your mouth, you will force air into you. That can actually be a good thing when you want to fill your lungs quickly as you go deeper, but that part you really shouldn't use. For now, the only time you should do this is to check it. And if you need a quick shot of air that's double the, what you would normally get when you draw on it, hit that and you'll get a really nice boost of air. Um, and that's just by touching the front of this right here. So this is important to know and important functions to check. So I have checked these both out already and they are good to go. This is new gear to me, so I wanna show you the procedure. Now, your depth gauge won't read anything. It's right, it's not reading anything. But it was sitting just ahead of that uh, and, and above zero before I pressurized the system. If it's been sitting a while, and it reads below, don't worry about it, pressurize the system, and when you do, you'll see this goes back to zero, which it did. So this is a good unit, this is not leaking, everything is good here. Uh, and these gauges are obviously your depth and your PSI. This is a separate fitting that allows you to hook up, I could hook up a, a, a handle with a lever that'll let me put air into anything I want, a boat, an air mattress, uh, another diver in an emergency situation. Um, in my case, I'm a salver, so what I'll be doing is filling boats off of my line, and I'll probably remove one of these and do the same thing with it so that I have a tag line to put into the boat because I'll be diving most of the time by myself when it's shallow. Uh, it's no big deal salvage. We do that all the time. 
if they're by myself and I have to do it, I'll just raise the bow over there. And I've done it many times uh, since I was young. So no big deal. I'm going to cut this video pretty short now. And uh, I've explained everything that's here. It's real basic stuff, guys. If you use it safely, you will be okay. So now we're going to cover shutting it off. I turned the valve closed and I really had it just barely cracked open, but that was more than enough to give me all the air I need. You don't need to all the way open it. It's not necessary. So now you notice this is still saying 3000. The system is pressurized. All I have to do is take one of these. Hope you guys can see this and push the button. And the harder I push it, the more air it goes out. I can push it really lightly and get a little bit of air. That's a really good tip underwater if you need a quick breath. You can just push this lightly and you'll get a nice boost of air. You push it hard, you'll get a lot of air. It's, uh, it's a really sweet setup. These are really good Sherwood units, blizzards, both of them. And I have another one right here that is identical. And as you can see, it's Sherwood blizzard again and the identical unit. The only difference in these two units is right here. And that is the pressure gauge on this one goes to 4,000 or 4,500 in this case, instead of 5,000. Um, but otherwise they're identical. They both, this one has twin black units or one black and one gray, uh, but they both are Sherwood Blizzard of different years. Uh, this is a really good setup all the way around. And so uh, that is the end of a quick overview of the diving gear. You now know how to depressurize the system. Once you have depressurized the system, you are safe to remove it, okay? So that is how you install, check uh, your system. Now that's after you've had it checked out. That's when you know it works and you're just gonna check it to make sure. Um, whenever you get new dive gear, you do this thoroughly, check everything out, make sure every feature works and is smooth operation. If anything is a problem whatsoever and you hear any pssst, any leaking of any kind, you don't want that. Now this is 3000 PSI, which means when it leaks, you will hear it. It'll be a noticeable thing as you could hear. So when you're done, you put the cap back on and your tank is ready for storage. Now I highly recommend this setup. You have a sheet netting here that is essentially rubber and it's uh, there to protect the tank. You also have these straps and I also have on the bottom of the tank, you can see this here. And this is octagonal type of deal, and it's so that you can uh, set it down on its side if you need to in a cradle, and it works awesome. This will be the base of your cradle, and you just put something here, and it makes it really nice. Uh, you got to keep this area safe. Don't bang it. Don't abuse it. I highly recommend these guys because you can use them to pick things up. And now I'll just put this away, and that's where it pretty much lives in my closet. So I am going to... Just show you guys real quick, close up, just to make sure you got a good view. This is the setups. And they are all Sherwood Blizzard. Every single one. This one has an orange, which I like because it's bright. I'll be using this one. And, uh, the other one has two black, or a black and a gray, which I don't really like because it doesn't show up as well underwater. But uh, this is going to be my primary setup, so that works for me. And it's also the one hooked up to the deeper pressure gauge. This is the one underneath. It uh, goes to 4,500. The other one goes to 5,000. Um, it's just because I have a couple of different tanks. This one's U.S. Divers. It's also 3,000. Uh, it's only holding about 2,200 right now, but it's fine. And then we have a little guy in here. 